This episode of the Local Hustlers podcast is brought to you by Flamingo Pools, your go-to maintenance and repair company in the East Valley. Stop wasting your valuable time trying to take care of your pool and let the professionals at Flamingo Pools take care of it for you. Visit azflamingopools.com for a free quote today. You're listening to the Local Hustlers Podcast, East Valley Locals. Get connected with small businesses near you and dive deep into their stories, mindset, and motives. Entrepreneurs everywhere. Get ready to be inspired by business owners, entrepreneurs, and hustlers that you can relate to and learn from. And now, your hosts, Dallin Huso and Ridge Waldberg. All right, welcome everybody to this week's episode of the Local Hustlers Podcast. Ridge and I are here today with Jared Nauman, owner of Dulce Churro. Jared, we're really excited to have you on the show today. How's it going? I'm doing great. Thank you so much. I'm excited to be here as well. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. We, know, uh, we know how busy you are and how hard it was to, to track you down. So, um, <laughs> so I'm not an easy person to get a hold of. <laughs> <laughs> I realize that. Uh, why don't you take a minute or two and just kind of uh, tell the audience just a, a quick bio about yourself, who you are. Okay. Well, um, again, uh, my name is Jared Nauman. Um, I like to basically... Uh, give you a little bit of history of where we came from and mm-hmm. uh, how we got to the point where we're here today. Yeah. Um, we as a family immigrated to the United States back in 1979, uh, basically escaping the regime, uh, regime of the uh, dictatorship there, it was called Pinochet. And uh, we came to this country uh, with nothing but our clothes on our backs. Wow. Uh, we were received, very, we had a very welcoming experience when we arrived in the United States. Mm-hmm. And, but, but once we got here, well, you had to do something about keeping your family up with, you know, rent and food meals and so forth. Right. And uh, because we lack uh, the English language, we mm-hmm. didn't have, we didn't speak any English, we had to find any type of jobs that could help us. So, yeah, we uh, did uh, pick some fruit and we oh, wow. we worked the land and we did several things. Um, uh, we also, uh, but that wasn't enough to uh, to maintain a full family of five, that my, mm-hmm. my parents and plus five kids. Mm-hmm. So, um we started to be be a little bit innovative. We decided, oh, well, let's let's try to sell sell or create little businesses uh-huh. here and there. Mm-hmm. So we had a big yard in our house, and we planted different things. Like mm-hmm. uh, we had rhubarb, uh-huh. we had corn, or we had uh, whatever we can plant, and we would put a sign outside on the road, uh, and people would stop by and buy things. So we thought, oh, this is great. Uh, we would uh, then we raised some rabbits and we started selling rabbits oh, wow. uh, off of the sign and oh, and then we had some chickens and we started selling eggs, um, and so one of the things that uh, brought us to today is uh, since very young my dad exposed us to entrepreneur mindset right mm-hmm. uh, create your own business generate your own income uh, no matter what it is mm-hmm. uh, be the best at it and one of the things that I have to say is the biggest example is my father my okay. father uh, was a hard is still a very hard worker. He can work all day long at the age of 75, and uh, you think that he's still 19 years old. Wow. He's just a hard worker. So that's an example for me. Uh-huh. Uh, my dad, as a, as a kid, would, uh, couldn't even see me uh, watch, sit down and watch TV. Oh, wow. So he would say, no, we've got a little chore for you to do. <laughs> and uh, he would always say, and he would say, all right, here, i got a, I got a job for you. Yeah. Go to the backyard, and would you please dig me a hole about six feet deep? Oh, wow. So um, it's a good thing we had soft earth in the back of our house <laughs> that uh, I, I dig a hole yeah and uh and then i said okay dad i'm done what would you like me to do cover it re- cover it back up <laughs> could say just to keep us busy oh, it was wow. something that he just couldn't see he us sit around and uh-huh. do nothing so he would create things for us to do and that was i use that example all the time because uh i always remember the 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 need to be able to work the need right. to be able to do something mm-hmm. and um but anyhow as we grew up like i said we had uh uh, all these different ideas of what we could do to sell or to uh, what type of services we can provide uh-huh. and it was just, just generating an extra income for us mm-hmm. and it stuck with me throughout my life and yeah. I hope I can teach that to my kids as well as an example mm-hmm. that's awesome sweet um, so I'm sure you really appreciate what your dad did for you now looking back at the time did you hate it did you hate oh, of course you I mean you were digging the dirt yeah. in the summertime digging a six foot hole and then later <laughs> and cover it up uh, it wasn't so pleasant yeah. but uh, <laughs> yeah looking back it yeah. definitely definitely has helped me in my life awesome. yeah. And your dad, you said it was kind of your example to having an entrepreneur mindset. Did he um, have any businesses of his own that he did? Uh, he right. had, yes, yes. He did retire his own business. Uh, after I came back from serving a mission in the Dominican Republic, uh-huh. mm-hmm. I um, saw my dad that was working uh, at a sign shop at the uh, hospital, local hospital in Provo, Utah. 
mm -hmm. right? And uh, he worked at the sh the wood shop and the sign shop, creating signs. Mm -hmm. And I told my dad, hey, why don't we just start a sign business? Mm -hmm. And he goes, he was afraid of leaving the job, the security of, uh -huh. uh, of, uh, of health insurance, right. and the income that's coming in. And I said, hey, I'll take care of it. I'll start it up. Uh, I'll start the selling out there. I, start, I made my, made up my own cards, and I started getting endorsed in different businesses. Uh -huh. And um, my uh, and not knowing at all how to make a sign, <laughs> uh, I would come back home and says, "Dad, we just sold. I just sold so many signs." Yeah. And he says, "Okay, let's start making them. And I'll teach you how to do it." <laughs> Basically, in the, in the in the garage after in our garage uh -huh. after hours, uh, we would make these signs. Wow, well, how old were you at the time? I, I was uh, twenty one. Okay, twenty one. Okay. And uh, he, and then the, from there, it just started to grow, started mm -hmm. to grow. I was, I was, I was, uh, I would hit the streets, knock on all these doors of the different businesses, pre present our services, and uh, it just grew. It just continued mm -hmm. to grow. My dad retired from that. Oh, so, nice. so it took off from there. It took off from there, yeah. yeah. Did you stay with him for a while doing that? I did that? stay for, with him for a while doing that, but then I came to, my wife and I, we got married, and we came to, to Arizona. Uh -huh. So I left that, and left it all for them, and uh, came back here, and I oh, did open up a little sign shop down here in Arizona. Okay. Well. Oh. Yeah. So did you ever have any college experience, or did you go straight into working right after? No, I did have some college experience, and, I, and that's something that I do tell my kids. Um, business, a business degree, business administration, business management. Mm -hmm. um, get that degree, mm -hmm. first of all. And then you can pursue a major or pursue another degree, in maybe in law or medical area, uh -huh. but you're always going to use the business more than you will any other Anything else? any other studies that we did, mm -hmm. and that's an example that I learned from my brother. Mm -hmm. When uh, my brother went to school, he went to medical school mm -hmm. in uh, in Virginia. He went to BYU first, pre med, Virginia medical school there. Then uh, and it was a like dental school. He graduated from dental program. Then went to Baylor to get uh, so uh -huh. he went he went to Baylor to get uh, his um, uh, specialty uh, orthodontist. Uh -huh. All right, so he uh, started his own orthodontal practice. Uh -huh. and his orthodontal practice grew so much. Uh, I, I remember him calling me and telling me that the average orthodontist practice grew by 250 patients per year. His was growing in the uh, balance of 1,200 patients a year. Really? Yes. And so he then told me, he says, I went to school for 10 years to study medicine mm -hmm. and, and dentistry. And I probably used that 10%. 90% of that is all business. Mm -hmm. Wow. So um, it, it being business savvy will help you mm -hmm. to be a better uh, entrepreneur, a better business person. Even yeah, though yeah. Regardless of what career you choose, you mm -hmm. can start your own business. Mm -hmm. If you want to be a kind of accountant, sure, get some experience at an accounting firm, but later on, think of open up your own accounting firm. Right. If you, and you're going to be using the, the knowledge of an accountant, but you're going to be practicing the business mm -hmm. side of it mm -hmm. all the time because you have to hire, you have to, well, look for a space for rent, you have to manage that, you have to pay taxes, you have to pay employees, you have to manage all the salaries and payroll. Right. So the business aspect of this is going to come into play more than the actual, maybe, the actual knowledge or electric career that you chose. Oh, awesome. Do you think that a lot of your success has come from your college, or have you been able to teach yourself a lot of things along the way that have been just as valuable? So I took uh, business administration mm -hmm. in Utah, which now today is UVU. Okay. And uh, yes, I, I love the classes that I took there. Mm -hmm. I, I, you can't replace those mm -hmm. at all. But uh, when it comes down to it, it's, 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 it's the school of hard knocks. Yeah. Just experience, the trials, the errors that you, and, and the, and just the failures, uh -huh. and then having to get it back up again. Mm -hmm. That's what really, really comes into play yeah. at the end of it all. Yeah. So you can go to school and learn as much as you want until you put it into action. You're not exactly. Gonna, you can be foot wise all day long right. until you put it to practice. Then yeah. it's a different, different yeah. story. Perfect. Um, so after after school, did you have in mind that you were going to work for yourself your whole life? And did you have an idea of what you wanted to do? Or did you just know that you wanted to, to be an entrepreneur and start your own business someday? I, I always, always, since the, I remember newly, being newlyweds talking to my wife, uh, that mindset of well, I want to be my own boss, uh -huh. I want to uh, do my own things, I mm -hmm. want to grow, I want to be successful mm -hmm. with my own efforts. Mm -hmm. uh, even though I have had employment and I've had jobs yeah. with insurance companies, I've always had a business on the side. Okay. No matter what I've done, I always had something on the side. I, I, I have to stay busy. I can't sit around. Uh -huh. I have to do. You something. go dig holes in your backyard. <laughs> exactly. When I'm yeah. not, exactly. Uh -huh. When I'm when I'm bored and I just get tired of watching the movie, then I just go to the backyard and dig <laughs> a <laughs> hole. Do you, do you carry on that tradition? Do you make your kids go out and dig holes in the oh, backyard? Well, we uh, over the years we've um, uh, my goal was always to live for free, mm -hmm. and this is how I, I implemented that. Uh, we bought a house, our first home uh -huh. when, when we first got married, mm -hmm. and then lived in it for a year or two, mm -hmm. and then moved into another home and rent the other one. And always having positive income, you're having at homes, you can live for free. 
Yeah. So that was my first goal. Huh. Okay, I want to live for free. I told my wife, hey, let's, uh, let's live for free. Yeah. How's that? Well, then people were paying their rent. Yeah. And by having passive income, you're going to have enough revenue in order to be able to pay your own mortgage mm-hmm. and, and live for free. So we accomplished that. And so as we have several rental properties, uh, every time a renter would move out, I would tell my sons, guess what? We have, a new, we have to go and clean up the house. Mm-hmm. So as soon as they knew that a renter left, they were going, oh, no. That means we have to go clean up the house. <laughs> and, uh, and at times, um, out of one particular home, we took out 13 trailerfuls oh, of junk really? and, took it, and took it to the dump. So my sons are very familiar with the dump, and <laughs> <laughs> they, uh, they enjoyed it sometimes going to the dump, and yeah. even though they might have complained here and there, but in the heat. But uh, yeah, they, they helped along. They came in, cleaned up the house, fixed it, we repaired it, or whatever we needed to do for the new tenant to come in. That's so awesome. yes, I did implement that as well. <laughs> So you don't work for anyone anymore currently at this time? At this time, I'm fully 100% self-employed. Awesome, awesome. Why did you stay working for somebody for so long? Was it to kind of get you to a point to where you can be self-employed? Eventually? That is true. A lot of people, I wouldn't say make the mistake, but some people jump into their business a little bit too quick without having too much, uh, we have a, without having the funds, appropriate funds uh-huh. to be able to sustain their business. Okay. So uh, in my experience, if you can, if you do have a job and you want to start a business, Start it on the side. Start it with a shoestring budget mm-hmm. and uh, grow it little by little, little yeah. by little until that second income becomes as big as your first income. Okay. Then you can re- quit your job. Okay. That, that that's was, what I did. Yeah, that was my next question. At what point do you know that it's time to fully dive into your side hustle and go all yeah. in on it? Both the yeah. income and the time that it consumes. Uh-huh. So you say, okay, I don't have time to do two things uh-huh. and I already can, I can replace this income by doing this other, yeah. by, uh, by staying, uh, by having grown that other business to the point where it generates the same income that you can quit. Yeah. And probably having a family too at the same time, you want to be able to make sure you're always having an income. Cause, oh, definitely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You make sure you, you don't leave that uh, household without an income. <laughs> that is the most stressful thing you can yeah. do. Yeah, so absolutely. you have to be prepared. One of the things I learned when I was uh, selling insurance to retirees, mm-hmm. I, would, I, would, I would go to a home in Paradise Valley or Fountain Hills and I would look at the home and go, wow, nice house. Yeah. Okay? And at the same time, then I would go to another part of the town where it was a low income and I would walk into a mobile home in the middle of the summer without any air conditioner, only a swamp cooler. And I would be sitting oh. there going, sweating, thinking, where do I want to be when I retire? Mm-hmm. And um, obviously, anybody would you know answer the better the better option right. yeah. so i would ask those people what is it that you did or what is it that you would recommend or what advice would you give me to uh for for my retirement what would, what would you do mm-hmm. and they said the best thing you can do is save as much money as possible mm-hmm. put away as much money as possible mm-hmm. so what i did is the first one of the first things i did is it, as worries as any newly well newlywed couples they would worry where would this the next paycheck would come from uh-huh. or would you have enough money to pay the mortgage yeah. right so uh my wife and i set a goal and we said all right we're going to set up an emergency fund mm-hmm. for three months mm-hmm. that means that how much do we spend just to stay alive right mm-hmm. the, the rental the insurance the gas the, the uh, utilities yeah. the food right how much is that we wrote down a piece of paper all right let's save that in for three months we once we accomplish this three month savings Mm-hmm. My next goal is, oh, that was easier than I thought. That means, you know, maybe eating less out. Mm-hmm. That means maybe uh, not going out and buy that brand new model of a car, but maybe buy this one, a yeah. good one. That means maybe not uh, jump into a huge home that you can't afford. Mm-hmm. Uh, it just means being th- uh, not thrifty or wise with your, with your money, mm-hmm. with your income. And then um, you save that three months. I said, that was easier than I thought. Let's do six months. Yeah. We worked to six months. Uh-huh. I said, wow, we get to six months. Next goal is one year. Let's save enough money to survive for one year. Wow. So that gives you a peace of mind at night. Yeah. To know that for any reason you would uh, become ill, disabled, lose your job. It may take you three months to get to find another job. Let's uh-huh. say, for example, it shouldn't take that long, but if it does, you have enough income to survive without having to worry where that next check is going right. to come from to pay for your mm-hmm. for the roof of your home. Okay. So once you've accomplished that uh, one year mark, like your goal, you can sleep a lot better mm-hmm. at nights. Awesome. It sounds like there was a lot of a lot of sacrifice, a lot of risk in being smart. Um, that's led you to where you are today. Um, a lot of people see your restaurant, see Dolce Churros, see how great it is, see how successful it is. But we don't really know the backstory and how much um, how much effort and sweat you put into getting to where you are to be able to have that today. Um, so let's kind of dive into that and how you first came up with the idea to to open a churro restaurant. Um, as one as, as my son kept telling me, Dad, you sh- you should check out this new place. Mm-hmm. You should check out this new restaurant. You mm-hmm. should check out this whatever. 
and I would go to those places and see the lines out the door and I'd see the big hype about this particular place. But their product they were selling, it was okay. It wasn't fabulous. And yeah. or, it, it, it was good. It, it was fine. It was great. But nothing to where you why would you drive so many people in. Right. Then I realized that, hey, social media plays a great impact mm-hmm. in this. So I told my son, I said, one day I will open up a business purely from social media. Mm-hmm. All right. So I uh, having that in mind and already having businesses and being okay, I did not I did not need have the need to generate more income. Uh-huh. Uh, but like I said, I can't keep myself still. I have to go back in, into the backyard and dig a six foot hole. There you uh-huh. go. There you go. So every weekend. Exactly. So I find myself complacent. I find myself uh, wanting to do something else. I find myself bored. Uh-huh. So I have to start a new, new, uh, new, new project. Okay. So my mind is always turning. My wife and I went to Spain, and we happened to have the churros there. We. Th- they offered me hot chocolate without churro, and mm-hmm. I'm, I'm not a fan of hot chocolate. Yeah. So I said, no, thanks, I'm, I'm okay. And the person there selling the churro says, no, you really like this churro, this hot chocolate. It's not the same as what you're used to. And I said, okay, I'll give it a try. Mm-hmm. Once I dipped that churro into the hot chocolate, I went, wow, this is really good. Right. <laughs> and I looked at my wife and I said, we have to bring this to the United States. We have to bring this to our neighborhood, uh-huh. okay? So I started doing some little bit of research. Mm-hmm. I found out that your churros were generated or created or they began in Spain. Right. Not Disneyland. Not, it, oh, I know. I thought so too. <laughs> and so we um, we uh, decided. Well, well, I started looking into that, and I looked at the history of uh, of the churro or the legend. The legend says yeah. that uh, it was created by the Spaniard shepherds in the Iberian Peninsula, taking care of or seeking or seeing or taking care of the chura sheep. The chura sheep is a breed of a sheep called chura again, and um, uh, they made these pastries. In the field and resemble the horns of the sheep, so they call them churro. So that's what the legend mm-hmm. says. Huh. So I thought, oh, this is interesting. So I sat down at my kitchen table one day and I started coming up with a design. Mm-hmm. And I drew in on a piece of paper mm-hmm. this, our logo, our she- sheep. Mm-hmm. Okay? Okay. okay. All right. So I said, okay. So I told my other son, hey, digitize this for me. Mm-hmm. And he digitized it. Mm-hmm. And um, uh, and it turned out really good. I thought, oh, this is really neat and attractive. We need to give it a name. All right. So it came up with a few months. I came trying to figure out a name. But I had the concept of I need to start a, a churro shop. Yeah. So what I did is I registered my company under a different name because I did not know exactly what name to give uh-huh. the business. But I registered it, saying I, once I come up with a name, I'm going to put a do a trade name under that LLC, uh-huh. Uh-huh. so that then you have the history of the LLC. You already have some history because as you do business, the longer you have an office LLC open, uh-huh. and the longer you have a history, the easier to, or the doors open up easier for you at banks or anywhere okay. else. Okay. okay. So as a suggestion, if you have in mind something, if you don't know exactly what it is, go open up a yeah, LLC, LLC right yeah. now. Just do it. In a random in name. In a random name, because you can always change it. You okay. can change the name. Exactly. Right? Or you can create a name, your last name, Enterprises, or whatever Enterprises. So it's, it's like two separate entities in a No, there's not two separate no. entities. It's one entity owning okay. a trade name. Oh, okay. Okay. All right? okay. So it's an entity owning a trade name, and then you use the trade name for the display, for the uh, fascia, uh, yeah. right? But then the corporation is, or the LLC sits there under a different name. Okay. But that corporate, or the corporation or the LLC owns that name, that trade name. Okay. okay? Uh, after doing a little bit more research, I found that they, in Spain, they have a churro school. Mm-hmm. I said, huh. what? Churro school? Yeah. I had no idea this existed. I don't think anyone so, so I enrolled in that school. Wow. Okay. And so six months later, I went back. And it's a school. Um, and it's just classes that just teach you not only how to make the churros. Uh-huh. But also the business aspect of it. How much does it cost, and, and all the you know where you can get all the ingredients, and, and et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. And so I decided, okay, I'll take the class, and I decided because they do sell the equipment there as well. I purchased all the equipment, and in Spain. Uh, in Spain. Okay. Not only after I did the research and find out that Spain made the best or the, the best quality churro equipment there is in the world, mm-hmm. cannot compare with any other country out there, and they're the experts in churro making. Huh. Mm-hmm. So I bought all the equipment, brought it back. And it sat in my garage for a while until we found a place to open. Uh-huh. So, um, uh, anyhow, um, that's what sparked the idea, and that's how it's, it started. The idea it started. Now, how I marketed after that is six months, no, even longer, uh, before I even fried the first churro in that fryer that I bought from Spain. Uh-huh. I started posting. I created an uh, Instagram page uh-huh. and started posting churro pictures and the idea what's coming soon. Yeah. I had no idea that that would catch so quick. Uh, The return on your investment on Instagram, to me, is one of the best investments you can do. For sure. For only $30, $50, you can advertise, and you get immediate response. Mm -hmm. 
okay? And so there I said, I remember what I told my son, I'm gonna create an Instagram business, an Instagram restaurant. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I started to um, uh, advertise, mm -hmm. $30 advertisements, paid advertisements on Instagram without having a location yet. Yeah. And the followers started to come. Mm -hmm. The followers started to come and started to grow yeah. until other foodies or influencers or news media like Phoenix New Times uh -huh. caught on to that. Mm -hmm. And they said, we'd like to interview you. From that point on, it just took off. So the day that we opened our churro shop, yeah. we had a line 45 minutes before opening, wow. standing on the door all the way they wrapped around the building. Wow. Okay. And I panicked. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I said, wow, <laughs> how are we going to do this? Yeah. We, the line did not stop for 11 hours, 12 hours, from 11 o'clock in the morning till 11 o'clock at night. Consistent all day. Consistent right all wow. day long. And it kept like that for two months. Wow. What, what did it feel like that first day, just seeing that line? I'm sure. It, yes, I was nervous. Yeah. I was just thinking, how are we going to do this? How am I going to uh, be able to service all these people uh -huh. in, a, in a quality way? Mm -hmm. Okay, Because when you have a rush like that, you tend to lose quality. Yeah. Right, right. Okay? So I posed myself. I said, okay, concentrate. Concentrate. Mm -hmm. And this will be okay. Good thing I got hired several people. And uh -huh. then we went through two weeks of training, so I was confident that they would do a good job. Right. Yeah. Okay? Um, but at the same time, thinking, how am I going to do this? Immediately brought back an experience that I had when I was at the age from between 16 and 19 years old. Mm -hmm. I worked at a restaurant, mm -hmm. and I remember having huge parties there, especially for Mother's Day. We would serve over a thousand people for a buffet for brunch, just for brunch, a thousand people. Uh, the preparation work that needed to come before that, and also the rush that you had to make sure that a thousand people were fed in a period of three hours, four hours, uh, it all came back. I said, all right, thanks for that experience, I'm able to do this. And I remember being that young and preparing everything and posing myself, huh. composing and hitting on that target, yeah. provide so customer just, service. So you mentally just prepared yourself in your head? Correct. Yeah. And before I opened it up, I opened, once I knew the idea, what I wanted to do was a chore business, I also prepared myself mentally. I mm -hmm. said to myself, all right, now it's time to get a second wind in life. Mm -hmm. You need the energy <laughs> and you can't complain. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that means that I stayed up sometimes at two o'clock in the morning mm -hmm. and woke up four or five o'clock in the morning. Wow. The next day, work nonstop all day long, building and making sure the build out was done correctly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And also doing all the research on what kind of chores we're going to do. And um, and it that long hours continued for almost a year mm -hmm. of just hard sacrifice, pure work, concentrate only on that, and make sure that it, it happens. Because you are going to anybody that starts in a business, they're going to experience yep. roadblocks, brick walls. You need to know and be patient, and figure out how you're going to go around that. For example, uh, licenses, permits, um, employees, uh, equipment. How do you get it here? How the equipment, um, uh, the right power f to feed that equipment. Uh -huh. All these little factors that you didn't think of before, they come up and then when an electrician says, oh, this is machine is a three-phase uh, 220. You don't have three-phase 220. Equi this building's huh. not equipped with that. Yeah. You go, well, I'm a little bit too late. I can't go back and say, don't do it. <laughs> right. Well, make it happen. What are you going to do about it? So I had some contractor says, oh, this is going to be very difficult. I don't know if it can be done. But I had other contractors that said, I think we can do it. And that's the immediately. That's the the, the first contractor that I hired. The one that told me, "Oh, I think we can do it. Yeah. I think there's a way." Not the ones that said, "Oh, this is difficult. Oh, I'm not sure. I don't know how you can do it. You're gonna have to get all these permits. You're gonna have to get it." Yeah. No, I always went with those people who said had a positive mind. Yeah, the same mindset as you. The same. They're gonna get through it no matter what it took. Yeah. Exactly. No matter what it took, we're gonna get through it, and we're mm -hmm. gonna put our heads together. Two heads think better than one. Yeah, for sure. And we're gonna make it happen. So is that hard on your family having to put in all that sacrifice and all those hours for that first year? Uh, they're probably happy not to see me for a while. <laughs> <laughs> no, they, it, it, it is, it is because uh, you know it. Uh, my wife, especially, hey, you know, being gone for so many hours and not dedicating much time to her as I did before, uh -huh. and things like that nature. Yeah. So yeah, it is, it is difficult. But when you have a focus and say, "Honey, we have a goal. Stick mm -hmm. to this, and it's going to be later on. We're going to reap the rewards." Yeah. Mm -hmm. But right now, you have to make the sacrifice because no uh, blessings or or a compliments are going to be done without the sacrifice first. Yeah, absolutely. Hundred percent sure. Yeah. I have a ton of questions. I don't even know where to start. But so for you, a big thing was your social media got people in the door, yes. and your product kept them coming. 
Correct. That is, you, you couldn't have said it better. Yes, correct. Okay. The product kept coming. So when you have a product, you got to make sure you have the best product you can make. Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah. It has to be quality. Uh -huh. Just like always uh, under this same mindset, I've always lived. If you are, well, no matter what kind of business you do, mm -hmm. regardless of what kind of business you do, you have to be the best at it. Yeah. If your business is janitorial, you have to make sure you clean the best toilets in the world. Yeah. Right. If your business is, Again, uh, landscaping, holes. Big holes. <laughs> you have to make the best looking holes yeah. in the world, okay. correct. No matter what it is, no matter what it is, yeah. you have to be the best at it. Yeah. And that's what's going to bring people, the referral. And it goes back to the service I provided to all those clients. Mm -hmm. Hey, do you provide any other services? Because I love your services. I love the way that your customer service. Yeah. I love yeah. the way you present yourself. Because I try to be the best. Right. Always try to be the best. Provide the best service you can. People will like that, will buy again, and then will refer. Mm -hmm. There's nothing better than free referrals. For sure. Um, so I want to jump back real quick with a question here. When you went to churro school, I'm sure a lot of people are curious exactly what that is. Is that like a long thing you're going to? It's not a very long, day? extensive. You do get a little diploma. So uh, I am okay. certified uh, churro uh, maker, a churista. <laughs> <laughs> churist. But uh, it, it is not that. It's that not that extensive. Uh -huh. it, it just it basically teaches you how to cook, okay. how to cook the churros, how to use the equipment, and the business aspect of it. So it is not a lengthy, long, drawn out. I spent one week in oh, Spain. Okay. Okay. Um, at churro school, did you did they basically just teach you like the basic churros? Because at your restaurant, you have a lot of different styles and shapes and types of churros. So did you learn that there, or did you kind of figure that out on your it's own? That's a very good question because they only teach you the basic. Uh -huh. Nothing about the basic. All right, you have to be creative with the rest. Yeah. So I am. Um, so after looking at the history of the churros, they created were created in, in, in Spain. Mm -hmm. uh, they in Spain they eat the churros plain, no cinnamon sugar, or nothing, and uh -huh. they just dip it in the coffee or the hot chocolate. Okay. okay? But I knew the churros had cinnamon sugar in it. Right. But it was not until 1930. That Spaniard went to Spain, I mean, went to Mexico, and said there was no churros there. So he created, decided to create, it started the churros. Now, in, in Mexico is when they started adding the cinnamon sugar to it. Mm -hmm. So I said, okay, so there's the, the, the variation of things, so you can add and be creative. I, as I was a cook in the restaurant business many years ago, I would cre get creative with some of the meals I prepared for myself uh -huh. sometimes. So, oh, yeah, let's add this, let's add that. Yeah. And again, brings back those memories and say, okay, let's create a new churros. Um, now, I'm from Chile, and... Um, over there, we eat the churros with the dulce leche filled, Ooh, yeah. plain, no cinnamon sugar on it, or maybe powdered sugar. So mm. does Argentina and Brazil eat it the same way? Okay. So I thought, okay, let me. See, what can I do to bring a different style of churro from different countries so somebody can have have different kinds of churros or the, right. the way they like it? Yeah. Well, with the American palate, you had to sweeten it up a lot more. Oh, <laughs> so yeah. sugar, when, sugar, sugar, exactly. Yeah. So that's why like, we came up with putting glazes on it and toppings. Okay. It's chocolate glaze with maybe Oreo toppings on it or yeah. sh sprinkles or whatever you like to do. So I started to look at different things on the internet. I started to research more. I started looking up recipes huh. and I started creating this little menu that I carry with, with me in my, on my phone <laughs> of the different types of churros. And as I get an idea, I would write it. Yeah. And then later on, it was all in my head. It's all written down, but no practical use of it yet. I haven't had been. I hadn't gone over there and actually did it. No, yeah. But it wasn't until we started training all the employees and had all the equipment hooked up and turned on uh -huh. that I told the employees, "Listen, be creative, make your own churro." Uh -huh. And then they started saying, "Oh, how about if we do this?" I said, "Great idea. How about if we do that? Great idea. Let's make it happen." That's cool. Just wow. create your own. I want everybody of which one of those employees. I want you to make your own churro the way you want it. Uh -huh. Here's all these ingredients. Here's all these toppings. Here's everything else. Make your own. Uh -huh. And I did not have the menu until a few days before opening. <laughs> wow. The true menu, the final menu, the final draft. Right? Uh -huh. I did not have it, the final product. I did not have it until just a few days before opening. Uh -huh. While my family was getting a little anxious, saying, do you need to have something? <laughs> I said, be patient. Be patient. Yeah. It's all up here. <laughs> I just can't put it in paper yet, yeah, but it's yeah. all in my head. Yeah. It's all in my head. Yeah. And that's another thing, too. You have a dream? If you have a dream, pursue it. Mm -hmm. It's in your head, write it down. Yeah. Take pictures, do something, because those things will make it one day, make it happen. Yeah. Yeah. Put, it, put it on the wall. Mm -hmm. um, I learned that from my son, too. Mm -hmm. First hand, I knew about the concept of yeah. putting pictures out and so forth, uh -huh. but I learned that from my son. Uh, he, for Christmas, he would go to the internet, to the internet, print pictures, and mm -hmm. say, Dad, I want this. Yeah. And we print them, and he said, I want this. <laughs> For some reason or another, it always he always got it. I don't know how, but it worked. Yeah. <laughs> Wait a minute, he just I just got fooled. How how how, how did that Very happen? Seldom. Exactly. So I thought, you know what? You gotta put it, you gotta put it in a book. You gotta put it in a paper. You gotta put it in print, and look at it. And then the more you look at it, the more the greater possibility that it will happen. Yeah. Yeah, I, I I agree with that. I agree with that. But it sounds like you're kind of like Mr. Worldwide with the churros. You're like <laughs> you get inspiration from Chile, from Correct. Mexico, from, from Spain, Spain, everywhere. America. Yeah, exactly. I like it. So why don't you be able to have everybody have the churros yeah. they grew up with, uh -huh. yeah. or be able right. to create their own churros? Yeah. And then I came up with the concept and said, you know what? I only not only want people to have a good churro, 
but I also want them to have an experience. Mm-hmm. How do how do people get an experience? So I went to Mexico mm-hmm. and I went to Rocky Point. And I said, I heard they got great churros. Oh yeah. Okay. So I went there and I saw how they make them on the street. Uh-huh. I already know how they made them on the street because I'm from Chile and they made them on the street too. Yeah. But it just kind of brought back memories. Uh-huh. I looked at them and I said, how could I display this, this experience of being able to watch somebody uh-huh. create a churro right in front of you? Uh-huh. But with, with, with the, all the health code, uh, with keeping right, all the health right, codes, right? right? Uh, all the health code laws. I said, oh, let me put a glass, a corner, and the fry right behind, right behind the glass. Mm-hmm. And people can see how churros are made. Because if you go to any restaurant, you see the churros in the menu, and they bring it out. Yeah. You have no idea how they made it. Yeah. You have no idea if it's a frozen churro <laughs> that was heated up in the microwave. Yeah. <laughs> you have no idea if it's a frozen churro that was fried. Mm-hmm. You don't know if the fr- churro was fried with other items in the oil, mm-hmm. which most likely will be chicken, yeah. fish, and other things. Chinese I said, I, I said, okay, um, I'm, I'm gonna sh- be transparent. I'm gonna show people how to do it. Mm-hmm. And this equipment, when I want to purchase equipment, they have automated equipment. So you can do hundreds of churros a minute. I mean, mm-hmm. an, an hour, hundreds, mm-hmm. but it's all animated. That's the fun watching somebody program something on, on a computer and have it all spit out. Uh-huh. Yeah. There's no fun in that. I wanted to have the artisan effect to be able to, so I bought the crank uh-huh. churro maker. Yeah. So that's what we have. Yeah. Yes, it takes a little bit longer to make, but it gives it more of an artisan effect. Yeah. Somebody making them for you as you order. Okay. We never pre-make churros. It's always to order. Okay. And people can watch the churros. So when kids go over there, and watch us make the churros, they're so excited. Yeah. Dad, 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 mom, 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 look, another churro's coming out. <laughs> they get all excited. Yeah. But what's gonna happen? Not only you'll be able to uh, the, the current clientele, but you'll be able to generations of clientele. Mm-hmm. Yeah. How is that? It's because those kids will bring their kids yeah. to, to what, how the churros are made mm-hmm. when they grow up yeah. and have kids. Yeah. So just not just generated, a second generation of clients. That's awesome. Yeah, it was definitely something I wanted to ask you about because it's not, not normal for restaurants to show the food being made. Uh, but you notice when you go into Dulce Churros, there's not only a line to get your churros, but there's also usually a line or a little crowd of people watching the churros being made. So definitely makes for a cool experience. Um, let's talk about some of these churros. First off, what, what's your favorite churro out of all the options that you guys provide? My favorite churro is plain, no cinnamon sugar, okay. grande with a Dulce Leche Field. Uh-huh. That's the way I had it when I was a kid. Yeah. So that's probably going to be my favorite. I'm going to have to try that. I'm going to have to try that. <laughs> my personal favorite is uh, the Churro Bites um, with cinnamon sugar, um, drizzled with caramel and um, a nice thing of ice cream underneath. We call that one the Evan. Yes, because Evan told me about it. My first time in, he's like, you gotta get this, I got that, I haven't gotten anything else since. (laughs) Exactly, he created that one and he called it the Evan. I like that. I'm a bit of a sweet dude, so I love the El Grande, obviously cinnamon sugar with the Dulce de Leche filling, the icing drizzle on top, and then cheesecake dipping sauce. Oh yes, (laughs) sweet, sweet, sweet. That's right, right. we have nine different kinds of uh, dipping sauces, so again, for mango, guava, chocolate, caramel, lemon, and we're always bringing some new ones like pumpkin seasonal and, and, cheesecake and so forth yeah. again to, to satisfy everyone's palate do you spend more time cleaning your pool than you spend swimming in it then call flamingo pools today flamingo pools is your go-to swimming pool maintenance and repair company in the east valley whether it's weekly maintenance repairs green to cleans or one-time cleanings flamingo pools will take care of you honest reliable and innovative just a few of the many good things flamingo pools customers have to say about them ask them about their mineral treatment which will keep your chemical levels down, allowing you to have a healthier bathing experience. At Flamingo Pools, they know that your pool was made to be enjoyed, so let them handle the rest. Check them out at azflamingopools.com or give them a call at 480-422-6013. Mention this podcast and you'll get your first month of maintenance completely free. That's azflamingopools.com and 480-422-6013. Is it, is it hard to train employees to make all these different types of churros? Because you went to churro school to learn how to do it, so do you have to you know, work with them for a while to get them to do it right? Or? Uh, it is not easy, that's for sure. Mm-hmm. Is it hard? I wouldn't say too hard, but when a new employee comes in, he won't become proficient until about two weeks of making churros. Okay. okay. Because uh, you have to get used to it, uh, you know, how to handle it, how the sizing and, and the shaping of the churro itself. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, it, 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 it's one of those things. You are not work with, uh, born with that skill of making churro. Uh, <laughs> no, you have no. to make it. Yeah. You have to, you know, learn how to do it. Yeah. And just like anything else. Just, just like digging a hole. Exactly. Just like digging a hole. Yeah. <laughs> consistent. Consistent. Be consistent. consistent correct. Right. So in this case, when I've hired uh, employees, uh, 
Yeah, I can't find anybody who's mixed churros because there's nobody that makes churros. <laughs> yeah. So uh, yeah. I had to no other choice but to to look at people, work skills, yeah. work ethics, uh -huh. very important. Where are they work as a ethics, person? Where are they as a person? Yeah. And I look at that. I put them to a test. I say, Hey, on an interview, do you want to make a churro? Here, let's go make a churro. And I can see the skill level. Yeah. If this person is going to be able to be more of a front desk person yeah. or in the back back in the kitchen person. Right. So you can tell from that, from the interview, you can tell from the personality, from the skill level, and then you can choose which is where they're going to be able to perform the best. Yeah, exactly. Not all of us are equal. Yeah. Some are more people pe people person, mm -hmm. some other are more skill person. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So you're going to be able to place them in yeah. that area. Mm -hmm. So you as a manager or you as an owner, you need to identify what is the best mm -hmm. skill level of that person. Is it in the office? Is it behind the computer? Is it in, in behind the fryer? Is it within the cashier with other people? Yeah. So you have to be able to need to identify that yeah. so uh, th because that will help you with your business yeah. how, having the right people in the right place yeah how do you judge or identify their work ethic though without hiring them and just seeing well you know, sometimes you have to so, some people can tell you anything on, on an interview right yeah. uh, sometimes you have to be able to discern you know the personality and be able to discern and have a gut feeling uh -huh. I, I, I use my gut for many things mm -hmm. not only to eat but to, <laughs> also, but to also judge all right yeah. so I go by that gut feeling and I think okay this person will do it now am I right all the time no I'm not yeah. okay but uh, I, I use that a lot and, um, uh, but after the first two weeks of employment, you can tell if that person yeah. has good work ethics yeah. or not. It's one concept that I always work under, or I always tell my employees, I say, uh, an honest day work for an honest day pay. Yeah. Okay. Um, the only problem today is that cell phone, yeah. um, social media. Um, it's hard to get people not to use their phone while they're working. Right. Yeah. And that is a distraction and that can, it's, it's, it's not good work ethic. So I try to explain to them, hey, you're getting paid for the time you're here. Yeah. So, you know, it's, it, it's important that you also provide the work. Yeah. Be here. Be here. Uh, you're here, be exactly. here. Exactly. Yeah. And then you're going to have some people that are going to show up and say, I just want a paycheck and just show up. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Well, those are easy to weed out. Those yeah. are easy to, to, yeah. to, you know, to, to let go sometimes. Yeah. And, it's, and it's sad that you will have to let go of people sometimes. Yeah. Um, the other one that I always get is, um, I'm calling in sick. Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. they look at the social media and they see they were at a party. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Uh, or they're doing something else yeah. they were definitely not sick yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, do you have tolerance for that or I don't nothing zero, zero. Yeah. zero tolerance mm -hmm. I, I, I see that happening I said you know what you made the other employees do your job for you yeah. because you did not show up um, this is your last week yeah so just be honest and transparent with you Correct. And yeah, be honest yeah, with me. Yeah. If you can't make it, we'll make it work yeah. we'll, we'll see if we can find somebody else to do that yeah. work for you but I zero tolerance yeah. and it sounds like a lot of it is just really getting to know somebody and who they are not just saying like, oh, I hire employees, and if they aren't, they don't fit this certain mold, then I'm going to let them go. It's really getting to know who that individual is and where they work best, and putting yeah. them in the right place. Yeah, and and uh, the example I always like to give is my two. I have two sons, mm -hmm. okay, and they couldn't be more opposite personalities, <laughs> and I, you couldn't think they're brothers. All right? right. So as they grow up, I could give one son one dollar, I or I give them both one dollar each. Right. Mm -hmm. One of my sons could take that dollar, spend twenty cents, and save eighty cents. Well, the other son will spend two dollars. <laughs> okay, so and I know which one you, you which one you know. <laughs> okay, so I give so I give the other one one dollar. He'll spend two. Yeah. So the personalities are different. Yeah. People have different concept of different things. All yeah. right. So you have to know, learn how to deal with that. Yeah. So it's the same as employment. Same with anything you do in life. People yeah. have different personalities. You treat them differently. So yeah. when I would ground uh, my kids, I would ground one with TV. And he's like, oh, no, I can't, no, I can't watch TV. <laughs> and if I told the other one, you can't watch TV, he'd say, okay, I'm fine. <laughs> I would have to ground him with playing with friends, yeah. mm -hmm. you see? Yeah. So ground one with TV, the other one going out playing with friends. And two different punishments, two different scenarios, yeah. but uh, with the interests of people are different. At a personal level. Exactly. That's awesome. Um, so you have employees that are kind of run the show in the shop. What is, what is um, the main thing that you do? What's kind of your role in the business right now? Well, right now, it's overseeing them, make sure everything gets done okay. correctly. Mm -hmm. So uh, f uh, after about a year, I, uh, employees would say, just go home. We got, we got it. Yeah. But I'm the hands-on person. I needed to you be there. Be it's I needed baby. It's exactly. a baby. I'll make sure that you know everything gets done right. Mm -hmm. But we had such great great employees yeah. that I start stopped showing up all the time. Mm -hmm. I mean, only show up for an hour or show up for, or not show up in one day, mm -hmm. right? And hey, my wife is getting happier here because now <laughs> I spend more time with the family, uh -huh. right? But, uh, uh, but then uh, I'm having six employees leave now, so I have yeah. to, we have to train six new. So what does that mean? More time. I have to be back. Not necessarily doing the physical work, but making sure it's done. I'm there. Show a presence. Um, there's a saying in Spanish. It's hard to translate, but it says, um, the eye of the owner fattens the horse or fattens the cow. 
-hmm. That means only with the owner there will your livestock keep you healthy and yeah. fat. Uh -huh. Okay. Mm -hmm. Same as your business. If you are not present, things will not run the same. Yeah. You have to be there to make sure that cow gets fed properly and is nice and fat. Yeah. And I'm sure that helps your employees knowing that you care about them, you appreciate them, you're there with them. Yeah, the we, we try to keep a very good work environment. Yeah, yeah. very happy, uh, relaxed. Uh, there's no need to be yelling. There's no need to be fresh, putting pressure. Yeah. Uh, people work better when they're, when they're happy. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, look at like the example of Google. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that environment is awesome. Yeah, yeah. awesome. Um, before we start wrapping up here, I just I'm curious to hear um, maybe in Dolce Chair, but maybe just in business in general, all the small businesses businesses you've owned. What's been your biggest failure and your biggest success? Um, well, this chair business definitely is one one of the biggest successes. Uh -huh. Okay, uh, all the businesses that I've had uh, have been successful. Mm -hmm. uh, the sign shop, um, I wouldn't say it was not successful. I had to shut it down. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, but I, that, that, because I got so busy with insurance, so I yeah. couldn't do two things at the same uh -huh. time. All right, so I had to let go of one thing. Even though I love making signs, it sad me to close it down. Mm -hmm. I had another restaurant as well. We had to close it down. Okay, okay? we had to close it down. Why? Um, it could give you a list of reasons why a restaurant can fail. Yeah. And that's one of the restaurants are one of the hardest business to keep up sometimes. Uh -huh. Okay, yeah. have one of the hard uh, the one of the top uh, bankruptcy level uh, uh -huh. of any other business. Yeah. Restaurants are very very hard to keep keep alive. Okay, mm -hmm. if you make it after five years, then you've done good. Yeah. Okay. Um, so we've had to place another restaurant down for numerous reasons, whether it be employment, management, uh, cost of uh, uh, the cost of uh, the overhead, all those piled together. Sometimes you have to make a decision: uh, Do I need to put more? Uh, more? Here's you've got a bucket full of holes. Do I need to you know keep putting water into it? Yeah. Okay. At one point you say, I quit. I'm not going to put more water in that because I can't plug all the holes in this bucket. So you have to make a decision, a, uh, and a business decision. Is it worth keeping it? Is yeah. it worth going? So, but still, doesn't mean you didn't learn from that. Yeah. Because the next one, hopefully, you're not going to make the same mistakes. So you learn from experiences. You learn from your failures. You learn from those uh, uh, mistakes that you made in the past to only become a better person. Awesome. Well, as we kind of wrap it up here, what what does the future look like for Dulce? What does the future look like for you guys moving forward? What's what's kind of your goal with things without giving away too much? Oh well, uh, there, our goal is to franchise mm -hmm. okay. all right we already spoke to an attorney and we I already know what to do okay, okay. one of the things first things the first steps I had to do was to uh, trademark our product okay. and we did okay hired an attorney we trademarked it and that's the very first step yeah. to growing and making sure it's done the right way so we get good administrative uh, uh, accounting I get all your products all uh, with the with the, uh -huh. with the business uh, structure get all lined up mm -hmm. for the next step which is expand right okay so attorney suggested that we open up two or three other ones before we franchise so yeah. our step is we need to make sure that we open two other two or three uh, I've noticed a lot of companies who open up too quick and because there's growing pains with this business, sure. uh, believe me, I spent a lot of money. Which I now, when I open the second one, I'm not going to do make the same mistakes. Yeah, I'm not yeah, going to yeah. pay. I maybe bought too many, too much equipment, or maybe paid too much for this because uh -huh. I did not know. Yeah. When yeah. I open the second one, it will be a lot easier. Yeah. It won't be yeah. as costly. Okay. Yeah. It's because I learned from the first one. So, one of the mistakes is to open up too many at the same time because you spread yourself too thin, yeah. and the risk of failing and risk of bankruptcy is a great a lot higher. So we're going to be opening up another one. And then as soon as that gets going pretty good, we're going to open up another one, and then so forth and so on. And let's see where the future takes us after that. Do you have an idea of where you're going to open up your second one? Uh, we, we have uh, everywhere. Uh, everywhere. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, every every, corner, every corner of the world, right? Well, right. Um, right now, um, Queen Creek is a good area. Yeah, yeah great. Okay. So we're looking into that. Mm -hmm. Scottsdale is another good area. Uh -huh. It gets a lot more expensive uh, rent there, yeah. but it's a good area. But interesting enough, the West Valley. Uh, we get lots mm. of clients that come from Avondale, Goodyear, really? and Glendale. Huh. Really? They come to us with, not only they come and they drive that fat far, but they bring a frequent punch card filled already. Really? So I say, yeah. that's a good opportunity, yeah. uh, the West Valley. So those are the areas that we're looking at, and maybe, you know, who knows what happens and how, how soon that could happen. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, we're, uh, we're definitely looking forward to it and seeing you guys grow. Um, I'm not just saying this because you're on the show, but Dulce Show is probably at the, at the moment my favorite uh, dessert place to go. Oh, it's thank just, you. It's the go-to whenever I got my sweet tooth, which is pretty awesome. Mm -hmm. so, thank you so much. Um, we love your place. That's why we're so excited to get you on the show um, and talk to you. And we, we definitely learned a lot of sitting here with you for this hour. So once again, thanks for taking the time out to um, to come talk to us. Like we said, we know how busy you are. Um, Ridge and I both know your son, Evan, so we were able to, to talk to him, to contact you. Um, it was a long process, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I ended up having to just go, to the, go into the store. We just went into the store. If you, want, if you want to get a hold of me, you have to show up in person because otherwise uh, there are some days I get over 70 texts oh, and over wow. a thousand emails That's so awesome. I, it is very hard yeah. to get a hold of me that way awesome yeah and I I haven't got a habit 
don't answer any phone calls that I don't recognize. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't recognize yeah. with the sales today. Yeah. Uh, you know. awesome. <laughs> awesome. yeah. Um, well, yeah, thanks again. Be- before we close up here, would you like to kind of just um, talk to the listeners who maybe haven't been in the Dulce Churro, tell them why they should come check it out and taste one of your churros? Sure. Um, Dulce Churro Cafe, located in uh, Baseline and Higley in Gilbert. Um, we ha- we- we're taking the churros to the next level in ways you haven't eaten before. Uh, that's all we do. Mm-hmm. That's all we do is just churros. And people think, wow, can you survive from that? Yeah. Just churros only? You don't sell anything else? But that's all we do. Yeah. Uh, and you'll be able to create your own churro the way you like it. And there's so many varieties that you can come back 25 times and not have the same churro again. Always a different yeah. one. Awesome. Well, yeah, everyone go uh, check out check out Dulce Churro. You uh, won't regret it, I promise. Yeah. Evan, we're not going to say which son you were in the dollar analogy. <laughs> but, um, yeah, once again, thanks for being on the show. We really appreciate it. Um, and thanks, everyone, for listening. We'll catch you next time. Yeah, thank, thank you so you. much. Thank you.